Good morning and welcome to the Mac Connect setup for back to school. I am now going to turn it over to Paul. All right, thank you. I'm going to start with another poll question, a fun one. What is your favorite go-to ice cream flavor? What is your favorite go-to ice cream flavor? Choices are pistachio, mint chip, chocolate pecan, strawberry, vanilla, or other. You just want to put that in the chat. So your favorite ice cream go-to flavor. Ah, love, love that one. Love cookie dough. And Chocolate they are almond. coming in. Again, the choices, pistachio, mint chip, chocolate pecan, strawberry, vanilla, or other. Milky Way. I've never had Milky Way, but I'd love to try it. And I'm going to end the poll, and I will let you know what those results are. Okay, out of our choices, it's a tie between mint chip, which is 29%, and other 29%, which is all over the place in the chat. If you want other people to see what you are writing, don't forget to switch it to, to all panelists and attendees, and we can then see what everybody's writing. And then little bits and pieces, but what's interesting is vanilla is that 21%. Some people still like that very, very simple flavor of vanilla. Yeah, I was, I was torn, and then I saw somebody write in the chat a bourbon one. Oh my God! Being a fan of bourbon, <laughs> I want to try that one. <laughs> I want to try chocolate Trinity. I don't. I, whoever makes that, I've I've got to try that somehow. <laughs> that just sounds amazing. And I have stopped sharing, so you can take it away. All right, thank you. So this is, as you know, Matt Connect set up for back to school. It's uh, hard to imagine, but it's almost here. So let's talk about our agenda. We'll introduce our presenters, review the objectives. The whole Matt Connect Back to School uh, is, is going to involve several things. Resetting the tablet, setting up the APH toolbox, pairing the distance camera. Of course, we'll field questions. Uh, please make sure they're put in the chat. All right. Eric Beauchamp. Is, our, is one presenter today from HumanWare, Director of Product Management. And Nat Nathalie Rayom, I'm practicing my French. Uh, HumanWare, Product Manager, Low Vision. And now let's go to our three objectives today. Participants will reset the Mat Connect tablet to factory defaults. Participants will set up the, the Matt Connect APH Toolbox application for a student who is beginning to use the Matt Connect. And finally, participants will pair the distance camera and connect the Matt Connect to the internet or a school network. And with that, I will turn it over to Natalie. Yes, thank you very much. So today uh, we are going to see how we can set up uh, your Mat Connect for back to school. So uh, either you bought a brand new Mat Connect, you're using the Mat Connect for another year for the same student, or you have your Mat Connect, but you have a new student that's going to be uh, using it. So we are going to look at the setting preferences uh, and the Google accounts that you already have set up or you will set up. Uh, you may have a different uh, a student with uh, a different uh, vision, so we have to look at the, the settings for uh, that student as well. So let me start by showing you my Connect 12, so you can follow up. Again, Natalie, we're not talking about the Connect 12, we're talking about the Matt Connect I'm today. I'm sorry, <laughs> did I? <laughs> yeah, so the Matt Connect. Um, so, uh, when you turn on your Mat Connect, you get into uh, our Prodigy suite right away. So, the first thing I want to show you uh, has to do with Android. So, you use four or five fingers, press and hold, and you are brought into uh, Android. Uh, 
To have access to all of the apps, you tap on the circle with the six little black dots at the bottom, and then you see all of the, the applications that you have. So to go into the settings, those applications are by alphabetic order. My setting is at the bottom here in the left, it's a gear, but for you, it can be just uh, anywhere because it is by alphabetic order. So you tap on it. And what I want to look right now is to uh, erase all of the accounts that were made for Google. So I am to scroll down. And this, and this step is not to take lightly. This is the most important step that you're going to do when resetting a tablet um, at Connect is to remove the Google account from that student that was using it previously. If you don't, then you will need the password for that account uh, in order to reset it when you're going to boot up the Mac Connect again. So that's a very, very, very important step right there. So put in big red in your notes there. That's the most important step in resetting the Mac Connect. Okay, so once I'm in my settings, I tap here on accounts. And I see all of the accounts that I have. On the top one is Google. So if I tap on it, I will see all of the accounts uh, that I have under that name. So to uh, remove it, I tap at the bottom, uh, at the top right corner here, the three little dots and it says remove accounts. So I'm not gonna tap uh, on it because I don't wanna remove all of my accounts. I wanna show you examples uh, with them throughout the demo today. So this is where uh, you tap to remove all of the accounts from your former student. If this year or this September, you have the same student as last year, that is not something you have to do because all of the uh, Google accounts will uh, be valid. So let and also me... if it's a returning student and he's using the same Mad Connect, you don't have to follow this whole procedure. You can just, if you want to reset to, let's say you can just reset the, um, the settings in, in, the, in Prodigy if you'd like to. But if it's the same student, you can keep the same settings, the same work that he has. If you, you can also just clear the gallery uh, just to clear his work uh, or, her, or her work in the gallery. So you can just clear that content if you want. You don't need to reset the whole uh, tablet and Android and things like that. So that, that was a good question, by the way. So I'm going to tap on the arrow here to go back to uh, Android or the arrow uh, at the bottom. So here I have all of the uh, apps that are downloaded. Regarding the Google apps uh, with the account, we have Drive, which is right here, Google Drive. That is uh, the apps that you're going to use if you want to share documents. Let me go back by tapping in the arrow. I have here Gmail, which is the, the, the account to send uh, or to receive emails for the student. And one last one I wanna show you, it's Classroom. So Google Classroom is one of the apps that you can use uh, to share documents and information with your students. So uh, if you want other Google application, you can go to the Play Store here, Google Play Store. Okay, Nat That's, Natalie, I'm just yeah. gonna stop you here because uh, right now in the, this procedure, we're clearing or we're resetting yeah. the tablet. So we're not gonna go into uh, explaining all the um, applications in Android. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody was asking here, can you clear some accounts and will you need the password of the account to clear them? And the answer is no. Uh, I'm just gonna share my, my screen here because I wanna show you uh, once you do reset the tablet, uh, what's gonna happen and how to, um, to do all your steps to recuperate or reinstall all the applications that you'll need. Is that okay, Nally? Yes, very good, okay. go ahead. All right, so I'm just gonna switch to my camera, which is set up on a stack of pucks, of hockey pucks. I'm Canadian, eh? So I'm, I love my hockey. So, all right, so I got my Mac Connect right here in front. Like Natalie was showing you, these are the applications that are installed on the Mac Connect. You can search for settings like Natalie just did. And to reset the whole thing, like I said, the most important thing to do is to delete that account. So in accounts, 
you'll find Google. And then what you want to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to remove one of my two Google's accounts that I have set up on my Mad Connect here. So let's select one. You'll most probably have only one that is set up for the Mac Connect that you have, uh, but you select it. And then on the top, like Nali was showing you, there's three little, uh, they call it a hamburger icon, which I didn't know that. Those three dots, one on top of each other, they call it, the nickname for that is a hamburger icon. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, Eric, the I, hamburger is the four lines. Oh, well, yeah. same thing. It's three dots. <laughs> so you, you do uh, select remove account. And what it's going to tell you, it's going to say, well, by removing all this account, you'll be deleting all the messaging, all the contacts that you have set up on this tablet. And that's what we want to do. It's all going to be kept on the server, the Google server, and, uh, and, and it will be kept there. So you can refer them after, but locally, that's, it's going to erase all the accounts and the messaging. So you want to click on remove. And by doing that, it's going to remove automatically that account. So I didn't need any passwords or anything like that. The next step that you want to do is that you go back to your settings and then you'll find the option backup and reset, which is uh, just a bit lower than the uh, option account on the settings application in Android. You'll tap on that backup and reset. And in this window, what you'll find at the bottom is factory reset. So by clicking on factory reset, uh, you'll be brought to another uh, window and at the bottom there's reset tablet. There's a little reset tablet button that you can tap on. And if you tap on that, you're going to be brought to another screen where it's going to say, are you really, really sure that you want to erase everything on your tablet? Because that's going to reset the tablet to factory reset and you'll 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 lose all your inf uh, personal information, your downloaded apps, etc. So if you tap on erase everything, that's gonna start the whole process. I'm not gonna do this on this tablet, but I did it on another tablet. Yeah, I got two at home. <laughs> so if you tap on erase everything, it's gonna start, it's gonna reboot the tablet. And then you'll see that little green uh, Google, uh, Google um, Android uh, that, that's gonna say on the bottom erasing, and then it's gonna reboot the tablet. And you'll end up, once the, once the tablet has rebooted, you'll end up in a wizard, which is the Google wizard actually. So this is my second tablet. I have already reset it and I followed the steps that, um, that, that I've just shown you. And then you're gonna end up in this Google uh, wizard. So you just follow the steps here. So you, you have select, uh, there's already English United States that are selected for you. So click on that little arrow button, the yellow icon, and it's going to bring you to the next step, where is to choose your Wi-Fi network that you want to use. So you can select one, and that, that's, that's a good step to do, because you want to have the most uh, recent um, apps or um, updates of these apps that are pre-installed for you on the tablet. And also, we're going to need it to install Prodigy and all its um, application in the Prodigy suite. So I'm just going to enter my, my, um, my password here. Yeah, we did have a question uh, on the password, actually. Uh, somebody asked, can you clear some accounts and will you need the password of the accounts to clear them? I, I answered that question at the beginning, but yes, oh, I'm we, sorry. you don't need the, uh, the password to remove uh, the accounts. Okay. And once I'm I'm on the internet or I'm connected to my Wi-Fi, you're going to get this pop-up automatically. So just for now, once you get that pop-up, which says update available, and that's your uh, pop-up that you get for Prodigy to update Prodigy, I'm going to cancel that. The first time you see that window, just cancel it for now. You will get back to that. I just want to finish the Google wizard first. Once you've I uh, canceled my, my pop-up that I got from Prodigy. The next step in the Google wizard is that you can uh, copy um, all the data and the apps from another Google account if you want to. Um, but uh, you can say also no thanks. So in this example, I'm just gonna say no thanks. Click on the next, which is at the bottom right corner of your screen. And then it's gonna check for all your infos. Then the next step is to sign in your Google account. 
If you have one already, if your student is beside you and you're doing this beside him or her, you can use his or her Google account. But if you don't have one immediately, you can skip this step for now and you can do it uh, afterwards. And this procedure, what I'm showing here, is good for teachers. If you're able to do this, it's a pretty straightforward procedure. Um, and I'll show you where to get a printed version of this procedure after we'll, we'll finish this. So for now, I'm going to skip my Google sign-in. There's a little skip option. And then you just skip that again. And then you can name your tablet. You can name your Mat Connect if you want. In this example, I'm not going to do that, but it, you enter your first name, your last name. And then it says, it says well, you want to set up an email. You can set up an email if you want to. You got different options here. You got Outlook, Hotmail, Yahoo, Exchange. So the Exchange option, if you're in schools and they're using the Exchange for your emails, you can set up uh, an Exchange uh, account on your tablet. Uh, I'm going to say not now. And then the next step is to protect your device. So you can have the option of putting in a PIN number or a sign that when you first boot up or when you come back from sleep, it's going to ask you to enter your PIN. Uh, usually what I do for my purpose is that I don't protect my tablet. I'm just going to leave it open so that you just uncheck that little box. And then you say skip. I'm going to skip anyways. And then in the Google services, what this window is, is really, would you like to share with Google your location, where you are? And, uh, and what that's going to have is that it, it can maybe suggest what's around you, or it can also uh, improve the, um, the accuracy of the um, location or the GPS when you have your Wi-Fi on. So it's up to you if you want to keep them. Usually what I do is I just turn them off. And then you can also help Android for the experience in Android. If you have any uh, bugs to report, you can leave that on if you want. I usually turn it off because it's just confusing sometimes. So I just turn everything off on here. Then do the next, which again is at the bottom right uh, corner. And then we've set up basically your Android tablet. Okay. So you're, you're in the Android system and then you want to install now the Prodigy Suite. This is a very simple step. What you want to do again in that uh, middle circle with six dots on them, you just click on there and th that's going to bring up all the, the, uh, the default applications that have been installed on the tablet. And in one of them, uh, it's called Prodigy Updater. So you can go through all the icons again, like Nile said, is in alphabetical order. You tap on Prodigy Updater, and then you'll see a pop-up which says, do you allow Prodigy Updater to access your services, your media services? You say allow, I need those, uh, that, that permission to continue installing the applications on your tablet. So you do allow. And if you get that little pop-up, as you can see, the first times you, you, you boot the tablet, you have these viewing full screen, and then it says, you know, to tap, exit, swipe, whatever, just say, got it. I'm just going to do that. And then we see the same window that we had previously where it says update available, want to install it now. So I'm going to press install. And what that's going to do is download six applications that are part of the Prodigy suite. And it's going to download them and then it's going to uh, install them automatically on your system. So Natalie, do we have any uh, questions maybe that I can answer while this is downloading? Uh, we had a question, but I think we answer it throughout uh, our uh, our speech. Somebody's asking, will, the, will that delete all the Google apps? Yes, well, it's going to delete all the Google apps that were installed. Uh, but it's going to keep, like you saw right now, uh, some default ones that are already installed when you buy a completely new tablet, which basically is all the uh, Google apps. So everything else is really um, removed or deleted when you do this procedure right now. Okay. And Elian did put the hyperlink on our support website where we can have all the information to do this procedure uh, and to also uh, work with the, uh, the apps from APH. 
Absolutely. Well, that's my going to be my next step. I'll show you where to get it. I'm going to share my screen and we'll go and get all the information that you need. Uh, because really in that link, uh, the support page, uh, you have a procedure and you also have all the applications that are installed um, on the um, APH tool uh, box. So okay, let me, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, and somebody was asking a question that Leanne answered also. Somebody takes care of a few students uh, in different schools. So the person was asking if they need to be at the exact school to uh, uninstall and reinstall uh, the software. So the answer is no, anywhere can uh, can work. Uh, but later on, we're going to show you how to uh, connect to the Wi-Fi of the school, either the proxy server or just the regular Wi-Fi. So for that, you have to be uh, at the school. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to let this install here. I'm going to come back to this one. I'm going to take my other one, which uh, we didn't reset, but I want to show you where what to do uh, to um, um, what you need to do to install the applications that are available in the APH toolbox. So what you want to do once uh, Prodigy has been installed is that you want to go back because once Prodigy is finished installed, you're going to end up in the Prodigy software. So what you want to do is do, do your five finger press and hold and it's going to bring you back to Android system. And uh, you want to go again in the settings. So again, that circle with those six little black dots at the bottom of the screen, select settings. And then in here, what I wanna do, that I wanna go into about tablet, which is the very last options at the bottom of the uh, settings menu. It would have been great to have that one here. Okay. so. Let me go back here. I'm switching. Sorry, I'm switching back and forth. But this is the tablet here, which I was uh, that I just reset it with you. So it has finished installing. And there's another update. So we'll let that one I thought it was finished, but it's not. So what you want to do, you go into about tablet, and you see this bill number, you're going to tap on it. I think it's um, five or six times, you'll tap on it and then you'll see a pop-up. Right now, I'm already in a developer mode, but what you wanna do is that you're gonna see, okay, well, you got one click left to be in the developer, develop, develop am I gonna say this? Developer mode. mode. <laughs> and once you are in that mode, what you wanna do is that you're gonna go back and you'll have a new options in your settings, which is called developer options. Okay, which is the second last uh, option in the settings menu. So you'll go on that. And then you're gonna go down the list and there's one option that I want to activate, which is the USB debugging. Uh, and this will uh, allow you to use specific tools uh, in Android to install these applications that we're gonna install. So what you wanna do, there's a little checkbox at the uh, right uh, of the screen, tap on that until it gets green. And then you're all set up. What you wanna do now is take your USB cable that came with your Mat Connect, which is basically just a, um, a very ordinary USB-C cable. So you want to connect that to your tablet and to your computer. So once it's on your computer, I'm gonna switch here to my computer. While you're switching, we have a question. Somebody's yep. asking, how do you set it so that the MatConnect slash Prodigy banner comes up whenever you turn on your tablet? Well, let's do that. Um, now, I think my other tablet here before I switch to my computer is it has finished uh, installing. So once you're finished installing, the next step is to change, is to um, install your language that you're gonna use. Most probably you're gonna be using English Okay, what am I doing? Um, it's bouncing back and forth and giving us a reflection of your ceiling. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because I'm hitting the power button. <laughs> so what you want to do is that you want to select English. You need to at least install one language. So you can install English. You can install Spanish if you want also. But in this case, I'm just going to install uh, my English language. Go back. Once you've selected your language, just press that little uh, arrow on the top corner, uh, the right to corner on top. And that's gonna install, download and install your voices, okay? And to answer the question, 
uh, to set your Prodigy to a default application. So that means that each time you reboot your tablet or each time you come back to your tablet, it's always going to be your home application, always your home base. Uh, that you do by going into the settings where I'm at right now, which is the Android settings. And then here, you're going to find a little option called home which is in the device section of the Android settings. You'll click on home. And in here, you'll have at least one application, which is called Launcher 3. Launcher 3 is your um, default home application that comes with your Android tablet. But we made it so that Prodigy can be set as your home application. So what you want to do is that you just want to check that little checkbox click on the application that you want it to, you want the, uh, the tablet to boot in to. So in this case, uh, I've selected Prodigy. So next time I'll boot up or uh, each time I'll press on that little circle at the bottom of the screen in the middle, it will come back directly to my Prodigy software. So that answers the question. And it's set like that automatically once you've reset the tablet it's gonna be set like that automatically. This is the tablet that I've reset it with you guys here. So I got my, my Prodigy all installed on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Android and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you that developer option. So go into all your applications, settings, and go down to about tablet, select that. And at the bottom, build number and start tapping on it. And you're gonna see that pop up come up. And I am a developer, cool. So I got my new option. So developer options, I can click on now, search for USB debugging, turn that on, say okay on the pop-up and you're all set. So this is where we were at with the other tablet here. I'm gonna connect my tablet to my computer using the USB cable. And let's go to my computer here. Are we good with the questions? Yes, we're good with the questions. Uh, somebody is asking what's the most recent update. So I was just going uh, to go there. Can you see my... Um, we see uh, human computer. Yeah, we see human your computer. Perfect. Okay, so I am right now in my... Um, uh, on the humanware website. I'm gonna switch so that you can see me talking here. Um, how can I switch my video? Oh, I can't. Well, while you're doing that, why don't I launch okay. one of our first poll questions? Sure. So we want to know some information for you about screen size. So what screen size is your preference? Is it a 10 inch screen size, 13 inch, 15 inch, 19 inch, 23 inch, or other, and if you have a, a different screen preference, please put it in the chat. What is your preferred screen size? 10 inch, 13 inch, 15 inch, 19 inch, 23 inch, or other. And if you select other, please let us know what that is. Again, we like to continually prove everything that we produce. So these questions help us build better. Okay, and if you couldn't get to the poll, you're welcome to put your numerical choice inside the chat. 10, 13, 15, 19, 23, or other. A uh, preferred for what use? So right now we are using uh, the Mac Connect as an example. So preferred use uh, as a, um, a tablet that would be flexible enough for um, utilizing magnification, both distance and near. That's an interesting question because it, it's true. It depends on where you're going to use yes. it. Yeah, and it no, depends also on your vision. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. And that's why I decided to clarify based on um, the similarity of what we have in front of us as the Mac Connect. So good clarification. Okay, a good portion of you have been able to actually answer the poll inside the polling software. And I'll share those results. 31% said 15 inch, 28, 19 inch, 23, inch was 21 percent, 
16% was 13 inch. No one wanted that tiny 10 inch screen. We did have some other in there. So thank you so much. Okay, Eric, take it away. That's very interesting because a Mac Connect is a, a 10 inch tablet and it all depends on what you're going to be doing. Uh, you're using your, 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 your CCTV. If you're in school and you're always moving around, if you're a professional, you're always moving around. It's very portable. So you have these, these kinds of limitation because a big screen is hard to move sometimes. So, uh, but yeah, it, that was an interesting question. Okay. So let's move on because we've got a lot of work to do here. So a lot, I got a lot of things to show you. So I'm on the humanware web page right now. So humanware.com. And what you want to do, most probably if you're in the United States, that will be already selected. You guys can see my pointer, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's already going to be selected as United States. But what you want to do is that you want to go in the support section of the web page. And then in the support web page, you'll find a section called Mat Connect. If you need any information about the Mat Connect, procedures, documentation, video tutorials, this is where you're going to go and get it. Uh, there's a lot of also material on the APH side, but on the humanware side, uh, this is where you can go and get it. But there's two, um, there's two procedures here that I have listed. I have install apps for APH and tablet reset and installation procedure. So that tablet reset and installation procedure is a Word document. So it's going to bring you to a download of a Word document and you can download that and it's going to, you can follow that procedure and it's exactly what I'm doing right now as a presentation. And uh, for the applications in the toolbox, you want to download install apps for APH. So if, once you click on that, it's going to bring you to a, a Google Drive, which I, I shared on the website. There is a procedure but there's also another zip file, which is called install apps for aph.zip. So you, what I do is that I download everything. So I have to download from Google Drive. On the top right corner, there's a download all, download that on your computer, and then extract the information. So I have already extracted the information, but basically you'll have a zip, extract that information, go in, and then you'll find another zip file. You want to extract that. So the way to extract a file, just right click on it, extract all. You can extract it where the location you are in right now. So you can see my window again, uh, still uh, Leanne. I'm not stuck on the web page, right? Nope, we're downloading. Okay, good, good. You can see you okay. download. All right. And also I have connected, like I showed you with the USB cable, my uh, Prodigy, well, my it's called Prodigy Connect 12 when you connect it to your um, Explorer. So your file explorer, what you're going to see is Prodigy Connect 12. This is, that means that I've connected my Mac Connect to my computer. So once you've extracted that, I'm going to show you, and we're going to go inside that folder and there's a little executable that we can just double click on it and it's going to start installing all the applications. Good. So it extracted my zip, same uh, naming convention for the folder. So install apps for APH, go in there. And in there, there's several files that uh, you have here. But the file that we're interested in is install apps for APH.bat, which is a, a bat file, batch file. So just double click on that. And what it's going to do, okay. That's the first time for me. So if you have that pop up, <laughs> Windows has a protection uh, on activated here, but you want to run it anyways. Don't worry. It's not going to install any viruses. It's only going to connect to my tablet and, uh, and then install all my applications. So this is what it's going to look like. It's going to start the connection with my tablet and it's going to install all my applications. Okay. So this is how uh, you would do uh, to install the applications. Once that little script has done um, executing, what you want to do is that when, when I'm going to come back to my Mat Connect here. Once that script is all executed and everything has done correctly in the APH toolbox, you'll have all your applications that are installed on your tablet. Okay, so that's how you, you set up your APH toolbox uh, and reset the whole tablet. And I want to come back to the question that we had at the beginning. 
What if it's a returning student and you don't want to reset the whole tablet? What you can do is that you can clear the information in a gallery. So if you go into the gallery application and hit that little gear uh, button on the top uh, right corner, you have several options here. And one of the options is called delete gallery content. You can delete the whole content of the gallery. So, uh, so you can restart from fresh uh, the new year uh, of school, not the new year of uh, the real year. And you can do the same for the notes application. If you go into notes, um, I think it's a, yeah, you have to press on the plus button on the notes application and you have delete note notes contents option which you can tap on and that's going to clear all your notes so you can start from scratch you can start the whole new school year uh, from scratch uh, but without a new student so a returning student with the old uh, the old mat connect so um Nally, i just want to pass it on to you because i want you to show how we're going to connect our distance camera to a new tablet because right now all all the hard stuff is done now it's going to be the fun stuff it's going to be how to set up your distance camera if you have if you're using a keyboard a bluetooth keyboard you can set that uh, set up that also so Natalie is going to go through that maybe set up all your contrast colors your audio feedback and things like that so Natalie is going to go through all those settings very good, thank you. Uh, so I just want to answer a question uh, from a question from before. Somebody was asking at what version we are right now. So we are at Prodigy 4.3.0.8352. Point so 4.3 was the last release uh, of last uh, April. And let me just show you where to get that in Prodigy. Swipe to settings in the carousel and then go at the bottom. The last option is going to be the about and you go into about and you got the prodigy version there. So if you, if you don't have that prodigy version, you can go back one, one level up, go into systems and then in system, you have software update, tap on that. It's going to, it's going to force an update. So if there is an update, it's going to tell you that there is an update and you can download and install it. Very good. Very good. Thank you. So let me show you my tablet. Um, when you're receiving your tablet, if you have a brand new tablet and a new student, uh, and you see that your student plays with uh, the clip and undock uh, the tablet, uh, it is possible to have a screw for the Mat Connect, which is at the bottom right here. It is included in the box when you receive it. So you take the, the screw and the screwdriver, you just put it at the bottom of your uh, mat connect. And then now it's impossible to undock uh, the tablet. So it comes with the screwdriver and the screw. And that, that was designed because we had a lot of feedback from the users saying, oh, my student is always playing with the tablet and I'm always scared that he drops it on the floor, breaks it. So now we have a way of locking it in place. And when they get older and they stop playing with clips and things, <laughs> then uh, we can unscrew it, uh, unscrew that little screw and then um, it, it, it becomes like a normal mat connect. Okay, very good. Thank you. So if I go back to my settings, uh, when you've uh, set it all of your, um, of your application in it, let me go into the, um, the APH toolbox. So Eric showed you how to reinstall of the, all of the applications. So that is where they do appear. If you have um, a version from before, you'll have something like me. And if I, I tap on the gear at the upper right corner here, and I tap on choose application, I will see which of the application I clicked in order to have in my, um, in my uh, toolbox. So if I wanna add one more, let's say Chrome, I tap on Chrome, I see the, that I tapped on it, and if I go back, now I see that I have added Chrome to my toolbox. Uh, if I tap on the gear again at the upper right corner, 
I can also organize the application. So that's the place where I will uh, move my uh, application around to, uh, to place them in different order. So if I want nearby Explorer at the beginning, I press and hold. Just press. I just press, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay, yeah, you are nice. good. I just press and then if I do plus, it's going to go on top. If I do minus, it, it goes in the back. So if I press on my arrow at the left corner, I see now that nearby Explorer has gone back to uh, the top. So that's how you play and you manage your uh, application in your toolbox. If you have a very young student, they may not be, they may not need all of uh, the applications, but as as long as your student is uh, growing, he may need to use uh, more and more applications. So this is a very fast way to go uh, into uh, any applications or Android. So we have a couple of questions on, yes. on the apps. Um, the first one, I'm gonna start with this one here because it's not related to the APH toolbox, but it was related to what we were doing previously. Can you use a Mac to install the apps? And unfortunately, no, you cannot. It was, uh, it was done for a Windows uh, PC. So you cannot use a Mac to install the apps. The second is uh, when you get a new Mac Connect, is the APH uh, toolbox already installed? Yes, it is. Uh, it's installed in production. What I just showed you, the procedure that I just showed you is done in production. So everything is there and installed. So right out the box. Should we install all those app, APH apps when it is a returning student? look like uh, there are some new things there. Uh, you can run it, uh, you can run the script, it doesn't matter if it's already installed, it will just jump to the next application. So if there is some new uh, applications that are not installed, it's gonna install it for you and include it in that list. Good. Very good. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to show into the toolbox. So for, for the settings, if you have a new students or a recording or a returning students, you go into the settings here. The first uh, setting is the user interface. So that is the place where you can choose uh, your interface. So the one I have with the entire suite of Prodigy is the advanced uh, interface. But you can show the you can use the basic interface if you have a very young student or student just starting to use the tablet. So let me show you the basic. But, uh, Nelly, I'm just yeah. going to bring you back a little because yeah. we did a nice procedure to reset the whole tablet. Yeah. And and if you do a reset to basic, you're going to need your distance camera. So if we reseted the tablet, we don't have that distance camera set up for us okay. to, to use. So let's go through the uh, setup of the uh, Wi-Fi camera, how to set up a okay. Bluetooth uh, keyboard, and then and then go into this, okay? I'm just, uh, let's yeah, yeah. just follow we're a logical gonna run way out of here. Time. Yes. Very good. So the user, the a good way to uh, set your camera is to go into um, the, the distance camera right away. So I do have my distance camera here. Uh, it is set up because I, I wanted to do some, um, some settings before, but I'm going to show you how to do it just by unsetting it. Oops. So in the systems, that's why, uh, where I see uh, all of my uh, tools. So the camera works with the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi network. That's not where it is. You can take a look at saved saved networks. Saved networks. You'll see all oh, your I networks that here. are saved. So okay. your, your tablet, your camera is going to be Pix Pro. Yeah. So, you, so I'm, I'm going to press forget to un uninstall it. Mm -hmm. So want to, yes, I want to install it. So if I want to install it from there, I can do it from the distance. But while I'm here, I'm going to do it. Wi-Fi network. I'm gonna scan for Wi-Fi, so I t I tap on it. Be oh, sure I that your camera to turn is it on. on. Yeah. yeah. So now it's on. I'm gonna scan for Wi-Fi again. Scanning. Doesn't find it. 
No, it didn't find my camera. I so, can go into the distance, so uh, I know it always find it there. So two finger double tap to go back to Prodigy. I tap on distance, it's on. So it's gonna look for my camera. It's not gonna find it. So yeah. you're gonna tap on the settings. Yeah. There, the settings. Wi-Fi setup. Yeah. Wi-Fi oh, so I come, uh, come back to the same place. Oh, there it is. So Pix Pro is my camera. I tap it's going to be something like PixPro dash SL10, and then there's going to be a four digit number, which is different for everybody. And you can have that digit number. Uh, if you have several uh, Mac Connects that you're setting up at, at one time, uh, you, can, uh, you can find that camera name under that little door where the battery is. Oh, yeah. So I tap on connect. Mm -hmm. My password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's always the same password for yeah. any camera. So my password for my camera is the same as Natalie's and, and as yours. So if ever it's unconnected, it disconnects in the middle of the year, the school year, this is how you would uh, reconnect your um, distance camera. Mm -hmm. And then I have it connected. So if I go to my distance viewing, it's there going to be go. connected, so my, my house, my window. Perfect, and that's, an, that's the number one thing that people ask me, how do I connect? It's not paired, my camera's not paired. Well, this is how you do it. This is how you, you pair your camera. And if ever your camera doesn't boot up or doesn't turn on, just we'll take a look at the battery. Sometimes you just have to push on the little battery in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the camera. It's just because it, it, it unclipped in, in the camera, so just, Go open that little door, tap on that little can, that little battery, and everything should be fine. Okay, uh, no, it's not. It's not possible to change the. Uh, there was a question here. It's not possible to change the password of the camera. No, it's not. That's hard coded uh, from Kodak, and all Kodak cameras have the same password. The only thing that's going to identify the camera with the tablet will be the name of the camera. Very good. So in the settings, what you can also restore is uh, to restore the factory default. So if you didn't restore all of the tablet because you have uh, the same student or a different student, but you can uh, keep all you, that you have installed, you can go here into the system in the setting. And at the right, at the end, you have restore to factory default. So this is going and you press yes. This is going to restore your factory default, which is uh, the contrast uh, and the audio. This is only in Prodigy. It's not the whole Android system. It's only factory reset for Prodigy. Okay, very good. Uh, you can also uh, in this in the settings in the user in, in the user interface, you can uh, choose your color. So here I have black and white. But if, I, if you have a new student with different vision, that is where you can uh, find uh, your preferred uh, colors. So you have white on black, uh, yellow on black, about 20 uh, different settings. So this is the place that you choose your settings for your new student. Very quickly, Anali, because we're running yeah. out of time, we have one more poll to do. So okay. just, just very quickly, the user interfaces, uh, people, uh, don't know, <laughs> not a lot of people know about user interfaces on the Mac Connect. There's three levels of user interfaces. The basic, if you click on it, please, Natalie. I'm sorry, Eric, I actually launched the poll when you said oh. that. I apologize. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> let me do it let's, really let's fast. Do the, let's do the poll. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, if you purchase a Chromebook or an iPad for the coming school year, what was your top reason for choosing mainstream tech over specialized AT smart electronic magnifier? Meaning we're talking about for a student, so put a student in your head or yourself. Um, why might you have chosen a Chromebook or an iPad instead of something like the Mac Connect? Doesn't have to be the Mac Connect, but something like it or the Mac Connect. Accessibility, connectivity, use of keyboard to learn employment skills. That's what my school district or agency will purchase <laughs> or other. And if there's something we missed, feel free to throw that in the chat. 
Um, what is your reason for possibly purchasing a Chromebook or iPad for a student as opposed to that smart electronic magnifier such as the Mat Connect? And I'm going to end that so I can reserve our time. Share. Majority of people, 47% said that is what my school district or agency will purchase. So thank you, that helps us. And 37% said accessibility, but thank you, that, that lets us know. Okay, your last well, remaining points there. Yeah, uh, just to come back on the poll, uh, so a lot of people are saying that that's what the school is buying, but you know that Chromebooks is an Android-based system, and most probably Chromebooks are going to be using classrooms, and, and Google Classroom is going to be used because of that, and the Mac Connect does the Google Classroom, but you have to really have to, it's a case by case, I guess, because it's nothing wrong to go mainstream and using the mainstream technologies that are available on the market for students that it's okay for them. But when you see a student where they bring the screen very close to, the, to their face and they have a bad position, well, first of all, that creates pains and aches and pains all over the place. And also it, it but demotivates them from school because while well, they're not well positioned, they got aches, so they don't want to sit down for a long, a long period of time. They don't want to study. So you have to be, you have to keep an eye out on those little things that, okay, maybe it's time to go with a more accessible device and more uh, that would help them keep that right position uh, at a school desk and have, have them read or write for a long period of time and like school and like learning. So that's my little two cents on that little poll. Thank you very much for that poll. Okay, very good. So let me go back to the user interface. So what was I, what I was showing you uh, before uh, is the type of interface you have access. So here, if I tap on interface, you have three uh, types of uh, interface available for students. So the basic interface, if I go, you just have, let me take a look for demo. You just have uh, the near view and the distance viewing. Uh, so it's for a student that starts um, using the Matcanac. And to go back, you see that I don't, I don't have Prodigy. To go back to Prodigy, I press and hold the contrast button here. And that will give me access to my settings again. Second button, I tap on setting, tap on user interface, interface, and then I can choose standard. So I'll go back. In the standard, I have my close view, I have my distance camera, and I have access to my gallery as well. So everything that I uh, take a picture of, uh, or I scan, uh, it, it will be transferred into my uh, gallery. So again, to have access to Prodigy, I press and hold the contrast button, which is the second button. And it will bring me back into my settings here, the second button, user interface, interface, and I will be able to go into the advanced mode and have access to my Prodigy suite. I, I see we're so, running. Yeah, so just a little note on those interfaces, very important. So your student can grow with the Mac Connect. So that basic interface is for, let's say, younger students where you don't need all that intelligence. You don't need to go on the internet. You don't need to go on, uh, get your emails. You just need it to write or read, do some real reading, live reading, see the teacher, see notes at distance. That's, that's your basic interface. And then once they get a bit older and then, then they need maybe some OCR, maybe having a better image quality when they zoom in, then you add that the next level up where you're gonna have the OCR done automatically on your captured images. You can refer them uh, afterwards in your gallery where you have access to, and you can also look at distance, notes the teacher, things that are written on the board. And then once they grow up again and they need that, uh, that internet, the Gmail or the, the Google Classroom, then you go to the uh, more advanced um, interface. So that it, it follows your student. And, and again, this is mainstream technology anyways. We just put a layer on top to have that better accessibility for the student. But you still use that, that mainstream, which is Android. And um, yeah, so that's my two cents on the user interface. Very, very, it goes with the screw also. So for younger students, put in the screw so they don't play around with the little, the little um, clip. And then once they grow up, 
uh, you can remove that screw. So it really follows, uh, it's something that's gonna follow the, the, the student as, as they grow up. Thank you, Eric. So the last thing I wanted to show you for a student growing up as well is the calculator. So every beginning of the year, you can choose on the calculator that you want. So I tapped on the calculator. On the second button, I have a gear. So I'll tap on it. I tap on the modes. And then you see that you have three different types of calculator. So the standard calculator is like just a really simple calculator. If I tap on the scientific calculator and I go back, I see that I have my uh, basic calculator right here, but I have two arrows here. If I tap on it, I have all of the geometry uh, or it's a scientific calculator, so ge geometry option. Let me go back by tapping on the gear here in the mode and the graphing calculator. If I go back to my graphing calculator, I have uh, the basic calculator, but if I tap on the two arrows here, I have everything that has to do with uh, geometry and I can uh, do graft with functions. So this is a calculator that is used uh, later in the education. So every September you have to evaluate uh, what you're gonna be uh, using for your students. And this calculator works with the Desmos calculator. So if uh, I'm pretty sure most of you know Desmos, uh, they, they offer a nice calculator, graphing calculator. It uses the same API as, as Desmos. Uh, we do have a, a webinar that I did only on the calculator that is on the YouTube of APH. And yes, you can change the contrast colors on the calculator. You can change the contrast color of the whole system, the Prodigy system. And uh, I found interesting, there's someone saying the student uh, um, uh, was discouraged or found it difficult to write under uh, the camera on the, on the Mat Connect. And that's why we integrated an annotation. So it becomes a um, paperless CCTV. So you don't need that paper anymore. You can write directly on the screen, take a capture, write directly your answers on the screen and then share that information by email, by Google Classroom. And, uh, and, and it becomes really a, a paperless CCTV. You don't need that paper anymore. Uh, I think we answered uh, everything and uh, I think we're running out of time, Leon. <laughs> we are. So I'm gonna say thank you so much. Uh, we will have another webinar next month covering the exact same topic. So if you wanna refresh your live, it will be available to you. And otherwise I am going to say thank you, Eric. Thank you, Natalie. It was wonderful to see you again. Thank you. And we'll do the same thing next month. Same webinar. <laughs>